I feel like I should be wearing a suit for this. At least I combed my hair for once. And technically we're wearing a different type of suit, an EMF radiation protection suit. But uh, you guys have been buying a lot of the hackleback caviar that we have on Frankie's Strange Meat, which is honestly very, very like cheap and low price compared to these. It's $35 an ounce. But I figured, you know, let's taste the caviars. Let's see which one is the best if we want to really carry it on Frankie's Strange Meat because very minimum, these are going to be like double to triple the price of that sturgeon caviar ranging from like 120 to probably like 220 250 dollars just for one ounce of caviar and the thing about caviar is there's diminishing returns if you're paying double or triple the price it's not going to taste twice or three times as good hey it might taste 25 or 50 percent as good but you have to keep that in mind so when you have you know the 35 dollar hackleback caviar that's a pretty good idea of what the experience is going to be like but these are you know there's a reason they're more expensive when you taste them so let me show you guys what we have in front of us today seven different types so we have these in order of least to most expensive you know one through seven the most expensive being the seventh one the least being the first one and about half of these are italian and the rest of them are asia now caviar is technically supposed to be from wild sturgeon either the Caspian Sea or the Black Sea, which are by like Turkey and Russia. But these Italian farmed caviars are from sturgeon, just not from the correct designation, which is why they are substantially more affordable. So the first one is a farmed white sturgeon, Italy. This would probably be about 90 to $100. This is a farmed Siberian sturgeon from Italy. This would be maybe 110 to $120. This is a farmed Ocetra sturgeon from Italy. This would be $120 to $130. So basically different species of sturgeon from Italy. The third is a hybrid Asian caviar. The fourth one is a farmed Savruga caviar, again from Italy. And the last two, the most expensive, are Asian caviar. So I'm assuming these are either from the Caspian Sea or the Black Sea. We have one that's an Imperial Ocetra caviar, and then we have a Imperial hybrid caviar. So four of these are farmed, the Italian ones and then the Asian ones are supposedly wild. Did I forget to say the price on the last three? Well, the most expensive one is $220 to $230. The second most expensive one and the third most expensive one are the same, around $170. So I guess uh, let's get started. Normally you would have caviar with accoutrements uh, like scallion, creme fraiche, egg whites, egg yolks, chives, a couple of things to break up the flavor and they serve it on bellinis which are like buckwheat pancakes. I just have some homemade sourdough bread here. We may or may not have that. And we have our pearl spoon. You want to either use like a plastic or just something that's not metal so it doesn't impact the taste of the caviar. So we'll start with the Italian sturgeons. And with all this farmed Italian caviar, I feel like I should marry some like really beautiful young caviar girl, you know? That sounds like, you know, not out of the realm of possibilities. Maybe if I could actually speak Italian and was half a foot taller. So farmed Italian sturgeon, the lowest price one. Very briny, a little salty, slightly buttery. Nothing crazy to me. So the second one, which is still a farmed Italian sturgeon, very similar price point, but not as briny, a little more buttery. I like the flavor more. And those are black caviars. Now this third one we're trying, which is still a farmed Italian one, has a more greenish color to it. That's because of the species of the sturgeon. Way, way, way different flavor. And that's the, um, that's the Ocetra caviar, which is usually the more expensive breed of sturgeon. That one tastes a lot better. It has like more oceanic flavors in addition to the butter. It's definitely more complex. Now this fourth one we're trying is the first Asian caviar. It's a hybrid caviar, the lightest colored one.
way different, way different flavor profile. Almost tastes bready. Almost tastes like a little bread with that buttery flavor. No, no, no ocean flavor almost. I'm not sure where this is from. Might actually be a, a fresh water sturgeon. I like that one the most so far. And that would be around $140. So not, not too crazy for a special occasion. So now we're going to have the farmed Italian caviar, the most expensive Italian caviar. And appearance wise, it's actually one of the smaller eggs, which, you know, isn't as desirable and it's still really expensive. By far the most buttery one so far. Very rich, pretty balanced too. So I, I like this one just as much as the, the fourth one, the Asian caviar. They're both very good, but pretty different flavor profiles. This, you know, much less of that oceanic flavor, almost tastes like bread and yeast. This one does have the ocean flavor, although it is a little more buttery. So now we have the Imperial Ocetra Asian caviar, which is actually the same price as the uh, most expensive Italian caviar. Not as rich, not as buttery, kind of plain to be honest. I don't think this one's as good. I mean, this one is still like better than the, the lower price ones. Because these lower price caviars, they have that like ocean brine and salinity, which a little bit of that's okay, but Yeah, if we're comparing these two at a similar price point, the Asian caviar and the farmed Italian caviar, this one, the farmed Italian caviar, there's so much buttery flavor in that. That's by far the most, the most pungent one. And then the hybrid Asian caviar, I really like for that bready yeasty flavor. So I guess, I guess, this is it, the most expensive one, the Imperial Hybrid Caviar. You know, it's like a combination of everything. There's a slight ocean flavor. There's a slight richness to it. But I think if we're gonna carry any of these caviars, so based off this tasting, and I'll go around again and try them again. I think we're going to do the Asian hybrid caviar, which is going to be around $140. And the farmed Ocetra caviar from Italy. I think these two have very interesting contrasting flavor points. And they're the best overall. The, the most expensive caviar, it has a very nice egg size, a nice presentation, but nothing really sticks out to me. So, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try each of these on some bread and we're gonna see if that makes a difference. One hell of a breakfast, huh? Plenty of omega-3, huh? Hey, if the uh, Russian Ukrainian girls didn't want to uh, come stay with me as a refugee, I bet they're changing their mind now, huh? Yeah, honestly, these first three, I feel like why not spend 20, 30 or more dollars and get something really special? This Asian hybrid caviar, it literally tastes like bread. It's really interesting. So if you're someone who doesn't like fish at all, I would have no hesitation trying that. Yeah, this Italian farm caviar more expensive one. Savruga caviar. Probably the most pungent flavor overall. A lot of brine, a lot of cholesterol, a lot of richness, but it is balanced. It is balanced. You know this, the most expensive one is definitely not it. So we can put this one aside. These two lower price ones, I'm not that much of a fan of. So 
by process of elimination. Yeah. That's very, very briny, too much like seaweed flavor. So again, we have a farm Saruga caviar from Italy, and we have an Imperial Ocetra caviar from Asia. And then the one I definitely like is the Asian hybrid caviar. I feel like this one's really balanced. It's very balanced. The egg size is nice. Honestly, as much as I like the richness and cholesterol in this uh, Italian caviar, the Farm Savruga, which is one of the more expensive ones, because of the egg size and how briny it is, this isn't something that like I would want to pay so much money for, you know? I feel like it's not refined enough. So I think we'll go with these two. The two winners are the Imperial Ocetra Caviar from Asia and the Asian Hybrid Caviar. If we end up doing the seminar in May, we're definitely having caviar. You guys have got your money's worth. This is how I'm supposed to wake up every morning. I'm laying in bed and some beautiful Russian girl taller than me, presents me with like eight ounces of caviar and some fresh homemade bread. 100%. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. I'm going to try not to eat all this caviar because this fresh homemade bread with the caviar is absolutely delicious and an amazing breakfast. But um, yeah, my schedule has been a bit off this week. I haven't been sleeping that well, work related stuff. So um, just wanted to do something a little different today. I honestly didn't plan on filming this because, you know, like guy eating caviar, it's, it's, to me it's not a really good look or humble thing to do, but I figured some of you guys would find it interesting and uh, we should be carrying the two I like the most on Frankie's Strange Meat in two or three weeks. So if you guys do want this, definitely send me an email because, you know, when something's so expensive, you want it to be as fresh as possible. We don't really want to put it in the freezer and we also want to send it out as soon as possible. But um, you guys can go to frank where you'll see Frankie's Strange Meat and all my other businesses. But as always, guys, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe, and be sure to check that notification bell. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you soon. And my brain's going to be twice as big from all this caviar. Maybe I'll remember something for once.